here with CLV Boost. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down one copywriting technique to double your sales with email marketing. So this is a strategy that I implemented well over a year ago. And although there's a lot of ways to get better at email marketing, you could uh, get in with more courses, you could just up your general copywriting skill, you could learn from a copywriting coach of some kind, you could study the email marketing of competitors. This is really about as surefire a way as possible to improve conversion on your own emails as, as is possible. This is about as, uh, as, as little speculation and as much certainty as I could ever give you for doubling your conversion. And it's actually a relatively simple process. It's gonna involve going through previous emails, sales pages, and videos that you've driven traffic with or to and assessing them. So we'll talk about the basic idea here, okay? The idea is this, you'll set aside a certain afternoon, morning, whatever the case may be, to look through all of the emails that you've sent out, let's say over the last 12 months. So even if you only had the last six months, we'll go over the last six months. And we're gonna look at what are the outliers there? So what are the outliers on the good side and what are the outliers on the negative side? So which emails in general garner the highest open rates and which emails in general garner the lowest open rates. Then we're also going to look at click through. Which emails in general garner the highest click through rates and which emails in general garner the lowest click through rates. And we want to make sure we're comparing apples to apples here. So if you had a specific sequence of emails that was during a very particular event or to a very small segment of your list that was much more or less responsive, then you'll want to control for that. But in terms of general messages sent across a large swath of your list, what types of messages seem to get the highest opens and the highest click-throughs? And similarly speaking, which messages seem to get the lowest opens or the lowest click-throughs and lowest opens on the aggregate? Looking through your past 12 months of emails, you'll be able to find those trends. On top of that, look at what you've sent your traffic to. So from these emails, presumably if you're in any kind of a direct response or sort of marketing domain, whether you're looking to drive towards appointments or to drive towards actual e-commerce sales, ask yourself which emails had the highest ROI and look at the sales pages or appointment pages and look at the actual video assets if there's videos on those pages or maybe uh, if there are just individual sales videos or promotional videos that you've driven to. And when you determine the actual conversion rate on page, so you can look at what percentage of folks who landed here turned into an appointment or a sale, what percentage of folks who landed here turned into an appointment or a sale, if it's a, a video sales letter or some kind of video marketing material of some kind, find what converted at the highest rates. So um, you're looking at your open rates and your click-throughs on emails and your conversion rates on sales assets. Marshal those resources together and then aim to build the following copy bank, okay? Just looking at this, not thinking about your own intuition, not making guesses, not looking at a, a, a survey you sent to your list six months ago, just looking at what you're looking at right now, which is to say your most successful and also looking at your least successful uh, open rates and click-throughs and your highest conversion rates on video and on long form uh, sales material, marketing material, ask yourself, what are the two top benefits that these assets, these positive assets, my best converters, all have in common? If I just look at the positive outliers, what do they all have in common? The emails and the sales assets. What do, if I could only pick two benefits that they most, most often overlapped with my best, highest converting material, what would those two top benefits be? And write those down. So go through the process thoroughly. Look over these emails. Read them in depth. Look at the anchor text. Look at the subject lines. Look at what's capitalized. Look at what's underlined. Um, look at what's highlighted. Look at the bullet points, the subheadlines, the headlines, the whole nine yards, and ask yourself, if there were really only two benefits that all of these were appealing to, and I had to find a commonality among all of my positive outliers for conversion rates, open rates, and click-throughs, what would those two top benefits be? Secondly, ask yourself, based on that same analysis of your positive outliers, ask yourself, what are the two top fears that are being addressed? In other words, what are the negative potential consequences of people not taking action, or what are the fears out there in the world uh, that, that are being addressed in these uh, uh, in this particular positive outlier sales assessment. So this might not be fear monger marketing. I'm not talking about only look at the emails that talk about all the bad things that would happen to people. Some people don't use any of that in their marketing at all, and I think that's just fine. 
Uh, too much of that is, is almost always a bad thing. But, but look underlying, even if the marketing assets are very sort of bland and vanilla, even if the emails don't really talk about a fear per se, ask yourself, if there were only two fears that I handled very, very well in order to garner the best response for click-throughs and conversions, if there are really only two that are tackled in all my positive outliers, what are the two that are addressed the most? What are the two that come through the strongest? What are the two that I'm, that I'm uh, you know, dealing with, talking about, speaking about overcoming the most uh, in all these positive outliers? Similarly, what are the objections being overcome? So fears might be the negative consequences of not taking action on an appointment, a sale, uh, engagement with content, whatever your, your objectives are. Objections would be reasons not to become a customer. So what are the potential reasons that folks would not want to become a customer that are most often being overcome? Is it issues about price? Is it issues about your expertise? Is it issues about safety? Is it issues about their reputation? Is it issues about what are the objections that keep people from buying? And in this particular instance, don't think about the survey you sent out. Don't think about your own uh, assumptions. Look deeply at your positive outliers and ask yourself, if there were only two objections that are most commonly being overcome with the, with the subject lines, the headlines, the video material, the anchor text, the bullet points in the sales letters, uh, if there's only two objections that are most, most commonly being overcome in my positive outliers, what are those two? And once you have these three factors together, your benefits, your fears, your objections, you're going to have in your hands rather uh, rather tremendous sales copy material and ammunition for your future promotions. This will not be based on hunches. This will not be based on what is called best practices. This will be based on reality. This will be based on numbers. Very, very few marketers do this. Most people understand some of the basic tenets and concepts. They look at what some of the other smart marketers are doing, and they sort of take a swing. But in an ideal world, you'll look at your own positive outliers and really make your choices based on them when it comes to rolling out new marketing campaigns, or at least inform your new campaigns with this, uh, this knowledge and these learnings. Uh, two additional final steps here to help you double your conversion with email marketing. First and foremost, Find 10 or more key terms that you are seeing very frequently. Are there, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you're selling uh, supplies for camping online or if you're selling Facebook marketing coaching, it I, doesn't matter at all what you're selling. Ask yourself, what are the terms I'm using the most? Are you using terms, you know, if you're selling Facebook uh, advertising, are you using terms like uh, positive ROI, are you using terms like uh, marketing funnel? Are you using terms like lead generation? What are the specific terms that, that are hot, that are getting people to click, that are getting people to buy? When you look at those positive outliers, what are the phrases? What are the, the you know maybe two, three, five letter combinations that are showing up time and time again in your highest performing uh, outliers that maybe are absent in your lackluster performers for sales uh, letters, for video sales content, and for emails. Um, what are the phrases that show up a lot more in your positives and a lot less in your negatives? And come up with key, 10 key terms. These will be terms that you'll use time and time again as ammunition for further sales letters and ammunition for further subject lines. Oftentimes, if you find terms that are very clearly garnering the attention and, and, and uh, garnering the interest of your audience, these can be rotated and flipped into subject lines particularly in your autoresponders, time and time again to be able to help uh, keep those conversions up and give yourself a safe bet so that you're not wondering, well, are they going to like this email? But you know pretty darn well these are terms that rock. These are terms that always do well, uh, or almost always do well, I should say. So coming up with a short list of terms. And then lastly, come up with saved templates. Find yourself a good fistful of top performing templates in email, um, the ones that have really blown the rest of your templates uh, out of the water and come up with some kind of a basic tenets and keys for what makes those special and what makes those work. And put that together in some kind of a Google document or an RTF or text document of some kind so that when you need to write new copy or you need to have your marketers write new copy, your employees, your contractors, they will not be basing it off of guesses. They will not be basing it off of hunches. They will be able to directly, overtly refer to your highest performing material historically and mold future marketing campaigns, future broadcast messages off of those best practices. 
find half a dozen emails that absolutely smashed it, find the commonalities among those emails and outline them. If you put these top two, top two, top two, objections, uh, fears, benefits, as well as your 10 terms, and give yourself a good paragraph or two to outline the commonalities of your best emails and copy and paste six of your very highest performing emails, subject line and, and all, into a text doc. If you have all of that in one simple text document, this document alone, as a reference, will permit you to create copy that was almost guaranteed to perform better than whatever you'd sort of pull out of thin air or you know where else. Um, so and this is not only a good tool to help train your employees, it's a good tool to refine and improve your marketing with a lot less creativity required because you're basing this on objective and empirical fact. Very surprising to hear how few of the marketers out there are looking at consistently what is working best and how they can consistently implement that back into their business. This is not a maybe tactic. This is not a could work. This is not a hope to work. This is helping you look at what's proven to work already with your audience and ensuring that you do more of it. If there's any way to double your sales, it's just that. So hopefully this video is helpful for everybody. If you have questions about this or ideas about how you might implement it, make sure to leave a comment down below. And if you like this material about email marketing and marketing automation, that's what we do around here at CLV Boost. That's what we think about all the time. Uh, and so make sure you stay plugged in and subscribe to the future videos that we'll be pr uh, producing here. So uh, feel free to, again, drop a comment if you have any additional questions. And I hope you've gotten a lot out of this video.